Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun computer science tutorial for you today. In this video, we'll be talking about file compression, specifically lossless file compression, like you might see in a .zip file. Lossless file compression allows you to decrease uh, the size of some information on a computer without losing any information. So this is useful for taking large amounts of data, uh, especially text data, and making it smaller on disk or smaller uh, to do something like send it in an email across a network. Uh, but in this case, we don't want to lose any information. What makes lossless compression different than lossy compression algorithms like uh, JPEG pictures is that when you decrease the file size, you can increase it back to uh, all of the information that was originally stored on disk. In contrast, a lossy compression algorithm takes data and removes information in a way that's imperceptible to the user. So this is most commonly used in things like JPEG pictures, where the amount of information that's removed isn't perceptible to the human eye. So you still see the same picture, but you can have a smaller file size. But for certain data sets, like text data sets, let's say you have a spreadsheet full of information, you don't want to lose any data. There's no way to cut out information without uh, changing what's actually important to the user of that file. And thus, we have lossless compression algorithms. Uh, again, this is very useful for particularly text information. We can compress the information down to a smaller size, and then later, after we send it across the network, for example, we can decompress it back to uh, the original size and access all of the information that we need. So how do we do this? How do we take information and make it smaller uh, on disk or to send across a network without losing any information? Well, we're gonna use some tricks with pattern recognition. In particular, uh, with repetition in our data sets. The more repetition you have in a data set, uh, the higher compression ratio you can get with a lossless algorithm. So let's take a look at a very simple example of a lossless compression algorithm. Real ones are much more sophisticated than this, but we can take a look at a simple data set and see how these algorithms work in a general sense. Let's say uh, our uncompressed data set is a table of students at a jujitsu school, or maybe members at a climbing gym and we're gonna store their name and their belt rank. So we have John Smith, who's a blue belt, uh, John Adams, that's a white belt, and a couple more students in our list. How may we take this information and pull out some patterns that we can make smaller uh, in our file? So there's a couple words here that we can see are repeated. Uh, the first one that I can see is the name John. John appears twice in our list. I also see two blue belts, and every person in our table uh, has some belt rank that ends with the word belt. So we see the word belt four times. Now in this data set, uh, each time the word belt appears, that takes up four bytes of information, four one byte characters for B-E-L-T and blue is four characters and John is four characters. So what we can do is we can replace every instance of these four byte words with a simple one byte integer and then we can store that information uh, for later use in a uh, lookup table. So what we'll do, we'll say that um, we're going to replace John with index zero in our lookup table list. We'll replace belt with one and blue with two. So now in our file, uh, each time these repetitive words appear, instead of taking up four bytes, four characters of information on disk, we're only gonna take up one character of information. Now, you know, if this list got longer, say they were, uh, we had 10 words that we're gonna uh, use, um, 
you know, each of those would take up two characters, but that's still a two byte reduction uh, for each of these words that are four bytes long. So now our compressed file looks like this. We have zero Smith, zero Adams, two one, white one, purple one, two one. And we also have to store our lookup table, right? Because otherwise we wouldn't know when we do our decompression step how to turn zero back into the original word. So we have our compressed data set and at the bottom of our file, we have a lookup table. So we have a list that's John, Belt, and Blue, and uh, we're gonna use the index of the words in that list. So this is zero, one, and two uh, for our lookup table. Now, if you wanted to do something more sophisticated, you, know, you could actually store uh, the lookup byte itself, but in this case, I'm just using the ordering of the list to uh, figure out what word gets replaced where. So in this example, um, it might be a little bit harder to see how this benefits us because we still have to store this lookup table. So with only four rows, we might not necessarily have a ton of compression here. But think if you have a table of 100 students or 200 students, and every time you have a four byte word, you're replacing it with a single character. This compression adds up and our lookup table will take up less information than storing belt every time it appears in a list of 200 students. And so the more repetition that we have, the more times that a single word appears and we can replace it with something smaller, the higher our compression ratio can be. So if we had some text data set where there were no repeated words or no repeated characters, we wouldn't actually see much compression. But since we do have a lot of repetition in our data set, we can compress that file size down a lot more. Now you can see why this, uh, the ratio of compression that you can get actually does depend a lot on the input data. For example, if you try to compress a bunch of pictures in a .zip file, you really won't see any reduction in the, uh, the data size because pictures by nature don't contain a lot of repetitive data. They, can, they contain a lot of data about individual pixels, whereas text data sets tend to have a lot of repetition. If you're storing a novel, every time the word the appears, which is a lot in the English language, if you can replace that three bytes with a single byte, you can achieve a much higher compression ratio across uh, the course of that novel. So lossless file compression is more useful for any kind of data where there's a lot of repetition, whether it's source code, whether it's uh, the written word, whether it's a spreadsheet or some type of you know tabular data set, that's when lossless compression really shines. Again, for things like videos and pictures, we use different lossy algorithms uh, to allow us to reduce the amount of data that we have to store. So I have a couple examples of this simple uh, lossless algorithm available on the Chain Tutorials GitHub if you're interested in seeing how a very simple example like this works in code. Um, so as always, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative, you've learned something new about computer science, and thank you for learning something new with me today.